let's uh, let's jump straight into this program, everybody. Can I make sure that um, you've got a pen and pad, glass of water? Please make sure you've got that right now. And um, as usual, we have a little bit of housekeeping rules. So you may want to keep your microphone off unless instructed. Keep your cameras off as well. Have a glass of water next to you, as I just said. A notebook and fun. Most important, what we want to do is have a bit of fun on this and really connect. I believe community is the key. Um, if you, there was a Harvard study and for 75 years it looked at happiness. And one of the keys was relationships, personal relationships and community. Not the amount of relationships so much, but um, the relationships where you felt safe, where you could let go, you could kind of drop your ego, you could be real. And I, that's what I love about our communities, especially um, with, our, with our live events, our leadership team with Live It Now, and, um, and also, you know, progressively with our online communities that are happening, um, we're able to create such a supportive environment where people can really let go and just be themselves without the pressure, without going to war on themselves, without, you know, the exhaustion and pushing and competing and comparisons and all of those things. Having an environment that actually recharges you instead of stresses you, stressing you out. And I know I want that, this environment to be like this as well for you guys, is um, especially on our Breakout to Success Facebook group. Um, you, you may notice I'm sharing a whole lot more content at the moment and, and really wanting to create that environment for you all to be able to connect, tap into, you know, the network. You know, your network equals your net worth. What does that mean? Well, everyone has resources. Everyone has their own specific network works and if we come together as a team um, what happens is is that you can create things so much faster than you can individually for those of you that don't know me and this is our first meeting um thank you so much for coming along to break out to success i i hope to see in some of our live events as we're bringing back all of our live events and one specifically an event that's um really close to my heart is live it now it's a fundamentally a free event that we run for the community um, i love to share this information because what i noticed when i was at school um this type of information wasn't shared and I really needed it. My my journey was really really tough when I when I grew up. I I had learning difficulties. I I lacked confidence, and there was severe bullying that was happening. And when I was in when I was in class, I kind of did that kind of comparison thing where I compared myself to everybody else, kind of on every level, whether it be you know how I looked or how smart I was, and all of those things, and it created enormous amounts of stress. And I didn't realize what was happening. I was going into a process, and we'll talk about this, I was going into a rejection process. And this is where we can be rejecting ourselves. And that was what I was really good at. I was really good at rejecting myself. I was really good at seeing all of the things that were not working. And then I would go outside of myself. And, and this is a process in the context of other people where we're either rejecting other people or thinking that other people are rejecting us without even knowing. And that's what I was doing. It's called a mind read in NLP. And I would suddenly start to think everyone was rejecting me. I'm going to get attacked, all of that stuff. Now, rejecting self plus then rejecting, you know, other people or thinking other people are rejecting you, it takes up energy. And this is what I didn't realize. When you increase emotion, you decrease intelligence. And so now, instead of being in present time, I was going back into the past, reliving past wounds, and then going out into the future. And then thinking of the worst case scenario, which is anxiety. A lot of people don't realize that's anxiety. And so no wonder I could not, um, could not think of anything to say or be involved or engaged because I wasn't there. I was stuck in the past or stuck in the future. And that takes up energy. The next one is, is that we reject opportunities. And because I was doing those two patterns of rejection, rejecting myself, rejecting um, other people, I was rejecting opportunities. I wasn't executing op on opportunities. And, um, and so this is a real challenge. And so my dad, as I said, he dragged me kicking and screaming into um, an NLP training when I was 12 years old. And I didn't want to be there. I wanted to leave. And I, and I said I was going to leave on the morning tea break, but he stayed and ensured that I was there. And it was profound. We, there are all these techniques, all of these visualization techniques. And, and even though I didn't think they worked because I couldn't really see pictures, I was more kinesthetic. I, I, was, I, I, I learned by doing more so. So the education system was challenging for me, um, but something was happening. 
And in this, and in this training, this presenter said that everyone's a genius. You just need to be in the right structure. And, and the schooling system and the structure of the schooling system really wasn't necessarily working for me, wasn't conducive for me at that point. And, um, and so anyway, I, um, I started to get into personal development and I became a little bit of a junkie. And I went to a course after course after course and, and, and I read as many books as I could possibly find. Now, when I was 13, a major tragedy struck. And my dad, um, who dragged me into these trainings, he actually passed away. And it was on Father's Day. We were running along Manly Beach and I was 13 years old. And, and it was devastating. And my life spiraled. And it was at my lowest moment that I was in my dad's office and in this big library. We call it, we called it, sorry, the Library of Life. And it had hundreds of books on personal development, psychology, business, health, all of these things. And, um, and also he had his briefcase there. And in his briefcase, I opened it and there was this like note and it said, um, if my son was about to speak at my funeral and I would want him to know that, that more than anyone on earth, um, that I loved him. And we had this big fight before he passed away. And so I was kind of carrying that guilt and to see this letter, to see this note, and I show it in living now, um, it was, it was really profound. And then this book just falls off the bookshelf <laughs> um, and it, it was underlined, it was highlighted. And of course I grabbed this book and it was like the perfect thing I needed to read at that point in time. And that kind of got me back on track. And I became obsessed with this bookshelf, like every spare minute from about 16 years on, I was just obsessed with this bookshelf. And because I felt he was really talking to me from, from these books but then I found, you know, I'm reading this stuff and I'm like, Far out, he's, he didn't apply this stuff. And, um, you know, he was in a job that he hated and he, you know, he had an enormous amounts of fear at, at an unconscious level. And that's what happens when, when people typically have a lot of fear, they need to control everything. And he was certainly that. And, um, and, I, and then I thought I want to do something about it. And so at age 19, I launched my first business and, uh, and one of the last things that my dad said to me before he passed away, one of our last conversations, he said, Matt, the key to life is to live it now. Out of everything I've read, the key to life is to live it now. So you can probably see that logo on the screen. Um, I launched an event called Live It Now. And, um, and initially, I, I ran it for free um, because I was petrified of public speaking. So I thought, if I've done a really bad job, it's free and, and I'll feed people and I'll raise some money for charity. Well, I didn't realize what was about to happen, but that event went viral, it went national. Um, by the time I was kind of 26, I helped build a company that hit the BRW top 100. And now you can see all of my other companies that I have now from Your Future Now um, to Your Future Events. Our, um, <clears throat> that's our events promotion arm. And, and we really love training experts, homegrown ex experts, and then promoting them. Instead of, you know, on the world stage, it's kind of more an insular, almost club, if you will. And I'm like, no, I'm going to disrupt that shit. So I launched Your Future Events, um, my brand, Matt Catling brand. Um, and then I've got another brand here, The Troublemakers. And The Troublemakers was, um, that brand actually came from my principal because he called uh, my, my year and more, more specifically my group at school, The Troublemakers, because we were the worst year to come through. And uh, I got expelled fighting against the education system. and half the school walked out in protest. So um, I've got this brand called the Troublemakers Network. And the idea with, with that brand is to help people break out of their jobs, break out of their business, break into life. And, and to replicate that schoolyard, I was having a beer with some of my mates from school and we we're, were talking about it. We'd love to go back to school knowing what we know now, running a mark, having a whole heap of fun, being free. And if you look at all of my brands, this is what it's about. It's about freedom. I believe we are designed to be free. I believe that, um, I believe like when we're kids, you have this, this sense of excitement, this sense of awe, um, you are free. Money isn't even a concept at that point in time. And you, and I can see it with my daughter, Elsa, like there is this excitement, this awareness, and there's this natural commitment, this natural resilience where she falls down, she gets back up, she falls down, she gets back up. And so from that perspective, we're designed with all of the things that we need to be successful. We've got, we're designed to have enormous levels of commitment. 
we're, we're designed to focus on what we want, to be inspired, to believe anything is possible. And there is literally abundance out there. And the challenge is, is that when you've been conditioned by fear, like you turn on the news, the first thing you see is death, destruction and fear. And so you'll take on board the presupposition that the world's unsafe. Um, we're not designed to be like that. We're not designed to hold on to those belief systems. And, but the challenge is, is, is that if you do, it increases anxiety, increases depression, increases addictions because we're disconnected from who we are. And so my mission with all of my, my trainings from Live It Now to the Freedom Accelerator to our Platinum Accelerator is I want to take someone that might be stuck in their wounds. They might be stuck in rejection patterns where, <coughs> sorry, where they believe um, maybe they're not good enough. They're not good looking enough or they're not smart enough or all of the things that I went through because my principal sat me down and said, Matt, um, with my mum and said, Matt, um, sorry, Denise, you're, you're, uh, your son's no Einstein. Um, don't expect much. <laughs> now I go to that school and present on possibility on what you can do. And, and the first thing I said is don't listen to your fucking principles. And so I want to be able to, I wanted to build a company that could take someone from kind of that wounded thinking and help them hand and hold their hands step by step and help them become truly free and, and when you handle the basic stresses, like when you handle the basic stresses around health, around wealth, around relationships, when you heal those wars inside, you have more energy. And so when you handle the basic stresses, what happens is, is, is if you create space for your true target, for your true mission. And that's what I'm, I just love helping people do. And so I help people on the inside. As I said, freedom starts off as an inside job and that's typically where I start. Then I give people the skills, the tactics, to be able to really, um, you know, get out there and take a leadership position in this new world. Um, leaders in this new world, we need to be accelerated. We need to be faster. Um, this world is getting faster with tech, all of those things. So it means that our decisions need to be fast. We can't be stuck in the past. We can't be stuck in the future reliving stuff. No, our thinking needs to change. We need to be quicker. Um, we need to be able to make decisions quicker. We need to be more creative in our thinking and solve problems. And we need to be able to execute. We need to be able to take action very, very quickly. The leaders of the future, I believe, are going to have an understanding of the unconscious mind to be able to turn limiting patterns into patterns of power. The leaders of the future will be incredible coaches. They will mobilize their team through coaching, through getting them on true targets, through to help them follow through and to create a structure that supports follow through. The leaders of the future will be able to share a message in a way that moves the masses. And of course, the leaders of the future, you need to treat yourself like a business. You want to skyrocket up the corporate ladder, you treat yourself like a business. You understand your niche, your value, you build your networks, you learn how to promote yourself, and you utilize teams and technology to be able to get out there. And the, and the interesting thing is, is that with our Freedom Accelerator, our Platinum Accelerator, these trainings specifically, is that when you get the inside right, it doesn't feel like work. This is the thing. So many people are used to going to war on themselves and pushing, 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 pushing. But when you create space inside for your true voice and you turn the volume up of your true voice and you move to overflow in terms of your energy, and that, that what I mean by that is an overflow of kind of life force and energy because of your health is right. An overflow of unconditional love because you've healed the past dysfunctional relationships and you've got more capacity in present time to be able to give love. Um, to be able to move to a place where you are, your thinking is abundant because there is so many opportunities. And, and how we do that is, is that we start off, we look at the, the inside and that's what Freedom Accelerator is and my Platinum Accelerator is then to give you the skill sets of that leadership that I've been talking about. So let's jump into it. Hope you're enjoying it, guys. Um, I want to talk quickly about an, a, a book that I recently um, I recently wrote. It's called Lacking Confidence. It's um, it's a guide to be able to increase your confidence. Confidence is the key. Now, a lot of people think when it comes to confidence, it is you know it's an outside job. <laughs> a lot of people think it's repetition. It's repetition of a task or an activity. A lot of the times when it comes to confidence, people don't look inside. And just like freedom, it's an inside job. 
And so on my um, Breakout to Success group today, I'm going to give a couple of copies away for um, away of this book. So if you guys want a copy of the Lacking Confidence book, just be on my Breakout to Success group. Um, we'll give you the link as well um, for that uh, Breakout to Success group. But I wanted to talk about this book um, for just a second. When it comes to confidence, it's an inside job, as I mentioned. But I want to kind of give you the process of it. We, if we look at, you know, if you look at results, results are fundamentally your behavior or your action and behavior. Now, when it comes to confidence, that's what typically people focus on, especially the school system, which is more action result, which is do this action over and over and over again, and then the result will be confidence in whatever that action is. Now, that is true. There's, there's no question about that. But also, if you want to accelerate your ability to create confidence in any area of life, now, I love confidence because confidence then has you do what you know. Um, if you're stuck in kind of a limiting wound or a limiting idea, you won't execute. But if you can develop certainty within, confidence within, you will start taking bigger action. You'll start accepting opportunities that are in front of you. And so a lot of people don't realize like a lacking confidence um, starts off as an idea. It starts off as a limiting idea. And then what happens is, is, is that we take that idea, we apply that idea um, a million times. I don't know if you've had that experience before where you've obsessed over problems or you've obsessed over the worst case scenario. Or conversely, you've been around someone and they've said something that could be limiting. And then you walk away and then you think about whatever that thing is that they said and you play it a million times. So that's, that's where lacking confidence starts. It often starts off as an idea. Now that can be typically between the ages of zero and seven, where, you know, mum says something with a tone of voice or dad says something with a tone of voice, or you're playing in the sand pit and um, someone breaks your toy or something like that, an idea pops in. And then we play that story over and over and over again with repetition. The more we play that story, then it becomes a belief system. Now, the challenge is, is, is that your beliefs determine what action you take. And so if you've got this limiting idea, this story playing inside that's turned into a belief system, A, you won't see opportunities anymore. Like limiting beliefs or limiting decisions are like doorways. And imagine a doorway is opportunity. If the door's open, there's a, there's a whole heap of opportunities. But if the door's shut, we're shutting ourselves off to, off to opportunities. And that's what limiting beliefs are. Limiting beliefs are where we suddenly start to shut the door. We start to shut the door of possibility. And I often joke and live it now and I say to people, it's like, you know, when, we were, when we're born, it's like we're in this mansion with endless rooms of possibility. But then what happens through setbacks and more specifically through limiting ideas that we pick up whether it be from media, parents, um, our, our community, um, you know, the education system, whatever it is, we suddenly start to shut those doors. And this is where we get to kind of middle-aged, you know, we're in our 30s more specifically. And then what happens is it's like we're living in a three-bedroom apartment now. We were living in this mansion with endless possibilities. But then suddenly through all of these limiting ideas that we picked up, we're now living in this three-bedroom apartment that's about to become a two-bedder. <laughs> and this is where people say to me, Matt, I feel trapped. I feel trapped in my life. I feel trapped in my relationships. I feel trapped in my job. Mm. Um, I feel trapped emotionally. And that just tells me that what's happening inside is, is that there's some limiting ideas that are playing unconsciously. And because of these belief systems, you're deleting, you're deleting the opportunities that are there. And there is a process of shutting the door, not opening the door. And so I find that if we can change these ideas and we have the technology to do this rapidly, this is what RCT is, Rapid Change Technologies. We can get into where did that idea start? <laughs> where did the idea start before the story? And what if we shifted that idea? Well, guess what? It's gonna neutralize the story. It's gonna disable the belief system. And instead of shutting the doors, what if we start to open the doors? Well, if we start to open the doors and we've got belief systems that are opening the doors, well, guess what? We're going to take more action. If we take more action, we're going to get typically the results that we want, not the results that we don't want. Now, do you think that is going to improve your confidence? Absolutely. So confidence starts off as an inside job, just as freedom does. 
And, and so if you want a copy of this book, I take you through a whole process to be able to uncover the ideas, to look at the stories, to look at the pattern, all of these things. If you want a copy of that, I've got some free copies of that book on my, I'm going to give them away probably 12 o'clock on my breakout to success group with Matt Catling. We'll put the link up there for you as well. So is that helpful guys? Give me a yes. If you're enjoying this, by the way. Yeah. I, Awesome. Awesome. Is there any questions on this? We've only got a small group. There's only seven people. So you get more time with me today. So I can help you more. Is there any questions on this conf concept, con confidence now? Um, Do you like it? <laughs> yeah. Good. Is it making sense? It is. It is. Yeah. So this is the key. We've just got to find the ideas. You may want to write that down. We're just going to find those limiting ideas on where they started and that transforms your confidence you literally start to see the world in a different way we see opportunity we see possibility instead of impossibility this is the thing we're kind of stuck in this concept of a recession at the moment now typically um when the media starts talking about a recession we've already been in one for probably six months the media is just catching up and so what that means is typically people don't even realize we've been in a recession, but then the media tells us and then their behavior starts to change. So the media gives us the idea, the limiting idea, we play it, we buy into it, then our behavior starts to change. So what if that's a wrong way? <laughs> like if we look at it, being in a recession for six months, your spending didn't change then. You weren't holding yourself back. You're probably thinking possibility. Because six months ago, the property market was still actually kind of um, on the rise. <coughs> People were talking more possibility, right? But if you look at the numbers, technically speaking, we were fundamentally almost in a recession. So, hmm, that's the power of an idea, everybody. An idea backed with confidence. Hmm, we start to play stories. Our beliefs suddenly go into limitation instead of possibility. And this is why Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett, one of the richest men on the planet, he says this, you do what you look at the masses, you do the opposite. That's just the key. <laughs> if everyone, if everyone is buying, you don't, <laughs> you start selling <laughs> and vice versa. And he talks about every single time. He's like, I just wait for this time. This is how I've made all my money. Everything's on wholesale. <laughs> and so if you look at all the tech companies, they've dropped exponentially. I think, what was it, 1.4 trillion, um, the, the combined um, has been wiped off the market or whatever it is. And these are really good companies. So Warren Buffett rubbing his hands together. What does he do? He goes shopping and he says, Every, everything is on sale. Everything is on sale right now. From a business point of view, it's exactly the same thing. Um, labor, labor is on sale right now. And so if you're growing a business, building teams, labor is cheaper now. Um, there are opportunities as, as companies get wiped off. Um, there are then opportunities to be able to really get out there, find a niche and dominate your market because there's less competition. See, what happens is, is a lot of companies, they buy into this idea and they contract. Now's not the time to contract. Now is the time to double down on your marketing. Now's the time to expand. Now is the time to invest in personal development, whereas everyone else isn't. <laughs> this is what happened in 2008. I, in 2008, I launched Your Future Now. Everybody said I was crazy. They said, why would you launch a coaching company, an events and coaching company at the beginning of a financial crisis? Who is going to invest in coaching? Who is going to invest in mindset work? And... Um, and, you know, I'd been through a real challenge, had a business partner that screwed me over. I lost almost 10 million. And, um, and so I was a bit shaken. And my family and friends, they had this idea, this limiting idea. They were buying into it with aggression, going, you can't do this. You can't launch a business. This industry is bullshit, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, no, nah, I've got to shield my mind. So what did I do? I turned off the news. I watched five minutes of the news a day, if that. I surrounded myself with the best mentors. I found the best mindset experts. I found the best, the best strategists. And I worked with them. And, in, and normally I would work with, with my coaches kind of fortnightly, maybe monthly. I went, no, nah, I'm going to do it weekly. 
weekly. And that's what I did. I doubled down on my time. I doubled down on my investment and everyone said I was fucking crazy. And I surround my, I surrounded myself with a high performance tribe, a tribe that was doing things, a tribe that was expanding my family, my friends, they weren't, they bought, they bought into this limit, limiting idea. Now I took this, I took your future now at the beginning of the global financial crisis within eight months, we'd hit seven figures from zero, zero to seven figures. Okay, a multi-million dollar business. Everyone said to me, you, how did you do this? This is just unbelievable. And I said, I knew people would need mindset right now because in times of challenge, what happens? We need emotional support in times of stress. Like most people don't realize 80% of stress is an emotional leakage with their mindset. They think it's nutrition. They think it's lack of movement, all that stuff. No. No, it's, it's, it's a past wound that has been triggered based on the current stresses and it creates an emotional linkage. And so I believed, and I was right, that people needed this support. Guess what, everybody? The same thing's happening now. It's come back around. You see it. There is an economic clock. So what happens is money gets cheap, then the property market booms and you have all the property people coming out and sharing their strategies. Then after the property boom, then what happens? Then there is a share trading boom. The market follows. People take the equity from their properties, all of that type of stuff. They dump it into the market. So the market starts expanding. Okay. Then you have all of the different classes of investments strategists that come out. So we saw Bitcoin. Previously, it was CFDs. It was Forex um, in, the, in you know, the cycle before. But we had Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, all the traders start coming out. Then you, had the, then you had the business consultants, all the business coaches and business consultants. And that's what we've seen at the moment is all the business coaches that turn around and bash mindset coaches. Well, of course, in a boom time, you don't need to typically worry about you know, mindset because everything's easy. But then what, what happens? The government pulls the money back or the corporations pull money back. So money becomes harder. So interest rates rise, harder to borrow money, property market starts to drop, all of those things. Now, what we're seeing is the boom of mindset coaching, everybody. So if you're trained in RCT coaching, just wait. We're seeing the paralysis at the moment. That's where people are paralyzed, freaking out. But after this, then people, when the shit hits a fan, they're going to be going, oh my God, I need to do something. I need to build a side hustle to increase my income. I need to do something. The government's not there to going to be there to save me. And this is what I'm saying. Wounded leaders crumble in crises. Authentic leaders rise. And we're seeing the rise of the authentic leader. And how do we do this? Like I said, it starts off as an inside job. We start off by accelerating your freedom by simply just looking at the war inside, creating space and turning up your true voice. Then once we've turned up your true voice, then we add the skills because then we know what, what is your purpose? What is your mission? What is your passion? See, clarity never comes up front. It comes on the journey. And that's what we want to be able to help you with. And so we've got to look at this at the moment. I want to share this concept with you because there are a lot of ideas that are being thrown around right now of limitation. And if you buy into that stuff, um, you'll miss the incredible opportunities that are opening up for leaders that are willing to rise. As I said, wounded leaders crumble. Don't be one of them. Work on yourself. <laughs> Turn your wounds into your superpowers. That's step number one. And then the clarity suddenly starts to unfold. And then we move into creation, arming ourselves with new skills from a leadership perspective. Awesome. So I hope that's making sense. Next one. I believe that we're on the verge of an incredible awakening and that typically is what follows a crisis. I believe what we're about to see is the integrity revolution. We saw it with um, Me Too movement. Um, there's transparency that's starting to happen. And even though the world may look like it's really challenging at the moment, there is a lot of negativity, especially online. I believe we're moving into a different direction. And the different direction is, is this integrity revolution. The integrity revolution really is leaders that are now starting to listen to that true voice inside. Like if you make life decisions from your wounds, that's kind of wounded leadership, right? But if you make life decisions from your wounds, like fear, like guilt, like 
I'm not good enough. You just repeat those patterns until they get so big that you wake up from the crisis. But what we're seeing is some people, you know, so I call them like light workers and, um, and light workers to me are the ones that shine a light in the darkness because darkness cannot exist in the presence of light. And so we are seeing these people that are going first, that are going through this awakening and the awakening is, you know, this world doesn't feel right. <laughs> um, there's something, I don't feel like I fit in. Um, there is something, there is something not right here. And that's what the awakening is. And the first part of the awakening is where we wake up from our wounds um, and we wake up from, from being trapped, basically. The next part is that we go and do the work. Authentic leaders do the work first. It's not, oh, you know, my partner needs to change, then I'll change, or, you know, this person needs to change, or the world needs to change. No, we go first. And the first thing that we do is, is that we turn these wounds into our superpowers. If you're on this, uh, on this training right now, I look at you as like the pioneers. The pioneers typically of your family tree of where you, you're, you're the ones that are waking up, going through this awakening and, and, and you were like, I, this fear stops here. I'm not passing this fear onto my kids. I'm not passing these limiting patterns on. They stop here with my, with my generation. And that's what the awakening is. The awakening is, is that, that we need a psychological revolution. That's what we need. The biggest problems that we face in the world to me are psychological. We've got wounded leaders running the show. And over the next 10 years, we're going to see an awakening. We're going to see this shift. And we're going to see the, the rise, the rise of authentic leaders. And I think the world's going to be a different place. And to me, what that will mean is, is that when it comes to business, you will need to be on a true target. You will need to be doing something that you absolutely love um, that, that creates freedom. <laughs> because if you look at it, if you look at leaders that are doing their life's work, that are doing what they love, they work harder. Someone that is passionate about something or passionate about a vision, they feel they're built for that vision because maybe they've had some wounds or challenges throughout their life and now they want to be able to share they've overcome those wounds they want to be able to help other people overcome those patterns that see this is the two things the more we grow we naturally want to contribute we naturally want to serve and typically when we're able to help other people overcome the things that that have, that have plagued us and be able to help people faster that's when we really start to switch on and so that's what i mean is the awakening where it used to be sex cells and all of that type of stuff no now what we're seeing is the activist brand is social corporations, corporations that have a vision to be able to make a difference, a vision to save the planet, a vision to help humanity. This is what we're seeing. And this is what I believe the future will be, is, is that from a business point of view, you will not be able to compete with an, organiza with an organization that has a team of authentic leaders, a tribe of authentic leaders that are aligned to a bigger purpose, a bigger mission or possibility. And so if you're on this training right now, I would say that you're probably one of those leaders, you're waking up quicker. It just means that we authentic leaders, we do the work. We do the work first and then we get out there and then we tactically make the changes. So take a deep breath in and out, everybody. Is this um, is this resonating with you, by the way? Give me a yes. yes Give me a yes. yes definitely. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. All right, let's get into it. <clears throat> so the war. Everywhere we look at the moment, there is war. <laughs> you turn on the news, war. Um, there is death, destruction. And war has been a mechanism, I believe, that has been used for attention for years. Um, if we look at, I, and I said this at Living Now on the weekend, if we look at um, if we look at the news, it's a commercial organisation. And so they make money um, by eyeballs, basically. They make money from attention. They're, they're a commercial organisation. They're not a government organisation. Their job is to satisfy, um, you know, their shareholders. And their shareholders want revenue. <laughs> and, um, and so how do they generate revenue? Advertising. And so they need they need more eyes on their on their on their on their shows basically. Now we have um, every message goes through the basal ganglia, part of our part of our neurology, if you will, and um, and that's fight or flight. <laughs> and so every signal goes through that. So what do you think gets our attention? 
fight or flight. And so fear, fear gets attention. And this is, this is what these organizations want. And so I used a metaphor on the weekend, which was, um, imagine this, you've got this beautiful Amazon forest. There is so much beauty in this Amazon forest. But what the news does, it will zero in on a snake eating or eating a rat and then say, oh yeah, we're at war. <laughs> um, there is so much other stuff that's happening. What if, well, what if we're safe, everybody? What if in this moment we are safe? And what if there are actually enormous opportunities? What if it's like raining abundance, <laughs> but we've got an umbrella up? We're not seeing all of the opportunities. And that's a challenge. When you're kind of stuck in war, that's all, that's all you see. This is what I'm saying. Turn off the news. Watch it five minutes a day if you need to. What if you started to see all the opportunities? What if you started to rise to a new level of leadership and take advantage of those opportunities and start educating yourself and doing things differently? So the old paradigm, and this is the old model of personal development. The old model of personal development doesn't work anymore. Um, and the old model has just taught us to go to war. And so if you, if you look at it, it was a war on terror. Um, sorry, it was a war on drugs. Then it was a war on terror. And now we've got wars popping up everywhere. Like, does war work? Well, if we look at the war on drugs, did it work? No. <laughs> there's more drugs now than there's ever been. You know, someone will... You know, you can, you can order drugs. <laughs> um, someone will show up to your house. Um, there's drugs everywhere. <laughs> and there's drugs being pushed everywhere through, um, obviously, you know, what's happening in the world. So did the war on drugs actually work? No. You may win a battle. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what they talk about. Oh, yeah, we won this battle. It's working. No. War perpetuates war. Um, did the war on terror work? No. <laughs> there's still terror happening. So war perpetuates war. War is very profitable as well for certain people. So if we look at, if there's war everywhere around us, what if we're doing the same thing? What if we're going to war on ourselves? What if that's our model for change right now is to simply just attack ourselves? And again, you might win the battle. And this is where someone puts on, you know, say five kilos and they go, oh my God, I can't believe I put on five kilos. And they go to war on themselves. And they don't attack themselves at the gym. They restrict themselves with diets, all of that type of stuff. Sure, they lose four kilos. But then what happens after that? They lose the four kilos. Oh, yes, amazing. I can go back to what I actually like doing. <laughs> well, guess what? What They put on another five kilos. So you won, you've won the battle in that moment for a couple of months. But guess what? You haven't won the war. The war's still happening. What if the war's a problem? What if war is exhausting? What if war takes up resources? Mm. What if there's casualties in war? And that might be you know, externally as well as internally, by the way, because when you increase emotion, you decrease intelligence. The same happens around finances, doesn't it? Um, someone may have a pattern where they avoid their finances, but then it hits threshold. They, they're in a certain amount of debt or their savings have dropped. There's typically a certain number. Then what do they do? They switch on, they go to war themse with themselves, right? Need to put this budget in place. I need to restrict, contract, all of that stuff. And then again, they hit a certain level of savings. The pressure's off. And then they go back to, oh yeah, I really want this, I want this. And then they're back in the same situation. So again, they've won the battle for a couple of months. They haven't won the war. The same happens with business, right? <laughs> you hit a certain turnover level in business. And then sabotage sets in and and again you have to build the business back up to the same turnover level same process going to war again relationships think about it in relationships um there's a trigger in relationships certain behaviors that you've been doing then you go okay yeah i'm gonna be on my best behavior i'm not gonna do this well you know you're gonna do it again <laughs> again the war battle versus the war what if the problem is a war everybody what if, the, as I said, what if it sucks up resources? The people that follow through are the ones that love it. The people that follow through on their health are the ones that love health, <laughs> are the ones that love nutrition, are the ones that love moving. Like the things that you love, you're naturally disciplined. So what's the opposite of war? Love, <laughs> peace. What if we can operate from that in our in our in our wealth area in our relationships area in our health area in your relationship with yourself well let me tell you what happens 
is, is that when you come from love and peace and you start to create positive associations to those areas where we find a way to get and wire you to the point where you're getting your needs met, you love that stuff, well, you start to follow through and it's easy and there's no energy taken up. That is the key. That is the key to overflow. And that is a new par paradigm is, is that we want to get inside and we want to heal the war inside because typically we've picked up this war or this pattern of war from other people. And that's what we call limiting decisions, everybody. Cool. Let's move to the next one. So as I said, the old paradigm of personal development is to go to war on yourself, is to, you know, attack the finances, attack your health, attack your relationships, is is to push more, is to do more. Um, but what if you're exhausted? <laughs> what if you're already in survival mode to push more? Come on. But have you ever noticed this? When you set a goal that you want, <laughs> that you're excited about, suddenly there's this rush of energy. So what you avoid in your life creates an internal war. Going to war on yourself creates enormous emotional leakages. As I said, what if we went inside and we looked at all of the things that you're avoiding indicates a war? What if we healed those emotional leakages? What if we, we found out where did this war start and whose war is this? Sometimes we're taking on mum's war, dad's war, grandparents' war. Sometimes there's been a war that has been passed on generation after generation. And guess what? That war is over. <laughs> so the biggest opportunity for personal growth is to, is to create a structure to systematically, everybody, to systematically... Um, embrace and move through the things that you avoid at all costs. But the big thing is, is the, the key is not to do this alone. We don't do this alone. We do this in a really supportive environment. That's why in my Freedom Accelerator, we have what's called the Accountability Accelerator, where we catch up every single week and we go, right, where are you at? Where do you, where, where do you need to be? Let's support you. This is why we have, you know, one-on-one -on -one RCT coaches that work with people one-on-one -on -one to move through this. The challenge is when you do it solo, everybody, when you do it solo, again, that indicates that there is a war happening inside. So yes, the biggest opportunity for personal growth is to safely embrace the things that you're avoiding at all costs. I call this a breakout. By breaking out of this cycle, you gain clarity, energy, lasting motivation without exhaustion and burnout. This is what we want to do. Okay, so next, next, next metaphor for you. Um, I love this metaphor. I call this the, th the sinking boat. So this is what most people are doing in this world right now. As I said, this mechanism of pushing, 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 working harder, um, yet we're fundamentally exhausted. <laughs> um, and that's a real challenge because if you're constantly like, I need to push harder, I need to push harder, it's going to lead to burnout. If you've got a belief system that I'm not good enough, sure you may be disciplined sure you may work harder but let me tell you you're going to be in a situation where nothing is ever going to be good enough and you're always going to think you need to work harder and push more and this is where we can have addictions to doing that person that is constantly doing constantly fixing um constantly sometimes jumping jumping into other people's dramas or rescuing um and with that type of person i say well what if we what if we stopped oh well, i can't <laughs> well but what if you did I had one guy who said to me recently, and, I, and he had, he's got multiple businesses, kids, all of that stuff. I said, what if we just got you to stop? He said, I would go mad. <laughs> and that's the thing. Often we will have addictions, distractions um, in place to avoid maybe what's going on inside, maybe the war inside. And so imagine we have this boat, everybody you can see this boat, it's sinking, but it's not quite, hasn't sunk yet. And what if we, you know, you've got this crew that are madly trying to get the water out of the boat. They've got buckets. They're madly trying to get the water out. But it's not working. <laughs> the boat, you know, you're just keeping your head above water. Think of that. We use that often the time. I'm just keeping my head above water. But yet you're working really, really hard. This is what I, what I find with a lot of people. They're working really, really hard, but they're moving no closer to their goals. In fact, in some cases, they're moving backwards. And they think, oh, well, I just need to work hard. I need to push more. Hmm. And so imagine we've got this boat, it's sinking. And one way is to madly get buckets and try and get all the water out. But what if we did something different? What if we, what if we stopped? And what if we found the holes? What if we found the leakages, the holes in the boat? And what if we systematically started to fix those holes? 
And then at the same time, we're getting the water out. Well, guess what? The boat's starting to float. Once we've got all of the water out of the boat, the boat is now floating. Now, some people say to me, then, then what do I do? Do I need to push myself even more with, a, you know, with an oar? Do we paddle as hard as we can? And I say, no. All that you have to do is point the boat in a true target, in a true direction, your true target. But how do we find a true target? Well, a true target comes from listening to a true voice. So many people are listening to the wrong voice inside. You listen to a false voice inside, you'll be on a false target. You listen to a true voice inside, you'll be on a true target. Well, how do we find the true voice? We get rid of the false voices. <laughs> Where do the false voices come? Well, from limiting ideas, limiting programmings mum's voice in our head that we've played a million times, dad's voice in our head well, that we've played a million times that we think's ours. If we look at kids, kids are born with a positive voice. So what if our true voice is positive? What if our true voice sees possibility? What if our true voice believes anything is possible? What if we just need to create space for that true voice? And so then once we get a true target, it's really this simple, put up the sails. There is this energy around us. A lot of people think it's doing. And even a lot of experts talk about this. They say, oh yeah, 80% is mindset, 20% is strategy. Or 80% is mindset, 20% is doing. And then what do they teach? 80% strategy or doing. And then 20% mindset. And they teach the wrong stuff when it comes to mindset. Outdated stuff. We've got so much new technology now. And so... What if energy is the key, everybody? And notice what I said, mindset. It's not mindset, it's energy. So what if 80% is energy? And we just need the right mindset to unlock the energy, to unlock our authentic power. Then we've, all we have to do is put, put the sales up. My clients experience magic. Um, in, the last, in the last 12 months, I've had clients... One client on the, on the verge of liquidation, relationship challenges, he lost his brother to cancer and was in a really dire situation. Unfortunately, that's when I get the call, is when people are in like those dire situations. And um, we healed all of the dysfunction. We, we created space. Inside, his true voice popped up. He came up with a new idea. And then we put a high-performance team around him so he, did, he didn't have to do it solo anymore. Created a $300 million business, valued at $300 million. He created $300 million in the space of 13 months just by doing this process, stopping, healing the emotional leakages, healing the holes in the boat, getting the water out, <laughs> then just simply pointing the boat in a true direction and putting up a sail and letting the energy, this incredible energy that's inside and around us do the creation but we're not tapping into it. If we're listening to a false voice, we don't tap into it. But if we listen to a true voice and we've done the work, we tap into it. This is where my clients say this stuff is magic. I had another client um, lose 10 kilos, heal arthritis. She's launched multiple businesses. This is in 18 months and healed her relationships with her kids. And she almost just did a million dollar month recently, a couple of months ago. This is within 18 months, everybody. Another, another one of my clients, um, Esmitha, um, eternally single. <laughs> what do we do? We heal the dysfunctions, the dysfunctional patterns of her relationships or the ideas, the limiting ideas that have been picked up over and over and over again. We created space. She's going on more dates, more opportunity than she's ever had in her life. All of the opportunities are there, everybody. This is the thing. A lot of people say, oh, the universe provided this for me. I'm like, the universe provided a long time ago. <laughs> It's there. It's like when you go and buy a new car, you, you see that car everywhere. So all the opportunities are there. We've just got to wake up. That's what the awakening is about. It's, it's waking up that we live in this incredible world. And that's what authentic leaders, you're not here to fix people. You're here to be an example. You're here to shine a light. What is shining a light? Being an example of lighting that fire inside of you, lighting that light inside of you and moving into overflow, an overflow of money an overflow of health and life force, an overflow of unconditional love. That's where we want to get you to. 
then go and help other people. Whereas a lot of people, they go and rescue people and, and they're exhausted. Um, rescuing typically is an addiction. <laughs> no, we want to get into overflow. We want you to have abundance in every area of life. Then we help other people. That is the authentic leader way. Awesome. So this is what we want to help you do. We want to help your, we want to help patch the holes in your boat. <laughs> we want to help you discover your true target. And we want to then help you um, unlock your authentic power and then point you in the direction and move into creation in a new way. Not from pushing yourself and exhaustion and all of that type of stuff, but what if it's from going back to that childlike state where it's just easy? <laughs> it's easy, it's fun, it's exciting. Um, and that's what total freedom in life and business to me is. All right. So we've got our three day challenge. Today is rapid change. So today we've been talking about limiting patterns and I'm gonna go through a process to be able to really help you create some rapid change. Um, day two tomorrow is we're gonna look at acceleration. So we're gonna talk about how to charge up, how to charge up. Most people are exhausted. They're not, they don't have a structure to be charging their energy up. As I said, energy is creation. And so we're gonna talk about strategies to live a charged life, to move to a new level of high performance. We move to a new level of high performance when we're in overflow, not underflow. Um, day three, we're gonna talk about success, how to create success in this new accelerated world. Um, this world's different. The definition of success is completely different. As I said, years ago, it used to be, you would see on YouTube, it would be like, you know, the boats, the jets, the women in, in bikinis, all of that type of bullshit. That's not what success is in this new world. Success to me is not about the billions of dollars and all of that type of stuff. No, it's, it's you getting connected to your authentic power, your authenticity, getting rid of the wounds, turning those wounds into your superpowers, rising to a new level of leadership, creating abundance in every area of life so you've handled the basic stresses so that you can go out there and do your life's work. And that might be launching an enterprise or being part of um, you know, another team, another tribe doing this stuff, but being able to move to that overflow, um, get that true target and then surround yourself with a tribe to really you know, make an impact. What if at this point in time, there's a reason that you're here and there's a reason that you're on this, on this training right now. Um, there is an opportunity for you. To me, that is what success is. Success is moving into overflow and, and unlocking your authentic power and doing your life's work um, with the precious time that we have available. So let's jump into it. We're going to talk about rapid change now. Um, rapid change technologies is what I created, RCT. I created rapid change technologies after 30 years of training research and, and I've worked with over 100,000 people um, from all walks of life, people that are really high achievers, titans of business, um, celebrities, athletes. I've worked with people also at the edge of life. Um, I've trained doctors, psychologists, neurosurgeons. I've trained thousands of therapists and coaches. I've trained business consultants um, in RCT. Some of these people are now um, the most successful in this country. Um, you would have heard of them. <laughs> They've been trained in RCT. I've become renowned myself personally. And, and if you ever come to live it now, any of our live events, you'll see me do this stuff to be able to really you know, look at patterns that have been with people for life and to shift them fundamentally in minutes and to help them long-term transition to a new high-performance psychology. I'm really excited about, about RCT. RCT, I believe, is, is a group of techniques that are set up for this new world. As I said, um, the old models are not working. We're moving into a new world, which is acceleration. We need Need to be able to accelerate but not burn out every five minutes we need to accelerate but be but use the mechanics of energy use the mechanics of the universe to be able to create at a higher level and to be main maintain that uh, that momentum consistently if you think of a supercar it's built for speed every component is built for speed um best fuel best mechanics um psychologists all of that type of stuff what if you're a supercar You've just never switched yourself on. And I say to my clients, why don't you give me six months? Why don't you give me six months? Let me be your mechanic. Let my team support you um, as, your, as your team. Let's do a pit stop. Let's heal the emotional leakages. Let's discover just how fast you can go. Like this is the thing. Most people in their entire life never 
never get to experience their best version of self, let alone a mission. And this is what I want to help you guys do. What if you did that? Instead of investing in drugs, alcohol, food, that's switching you off, what if you gave me six months? Six months to turn those wounds into your superpowers. Six months to use RTT to rapidly transform, turn up the volume of that true voice and to get on a true target in life. What if you did that? I, to me, that is the ultimate investment. But yet, a lot of people, they passionately invest in their problems, their addictions, because it distracts themselves from the war that is happening inside. So, rapid change technologies, why does it work? Well, we do release work. So, and the release work, what we're interested in is, we're, we're interested in where did this pattern start? We want to go back to the origination of the pattern, the origination of the idea, um, before the story, before the belief, and we want to shift that idea because we know if we can shift that idea, it will neutralize the story, it will neutralize the belief, and then all of a sudden we're going to unlock doors instead of be shutting doors. Um, we use coaching because coaching is a really, really powerful process over the long term to create, um, to discover a true target, to create a really a supportive environment and help people um, execute. Um, the next one is consulting. Consulting is where we bring in advisory. We bring in advice. That's what a consultant does. They say, do this, do this, do this. So I find combining all of these three on the outside, as you can see, release work, coaching, um, and consulting, if we combine all of those together, it's very, very powerful. I, you'll see a lot of people out there, they just do one of them. You'll see a mindset coach, they just do mindset. Or you'll see a coach, a life coach, they just do coaching. Or you'll see a, a consultant, they'll just give advice. No, <laughs> because there are certain times where we need some mindset work or we need more of a coaching structure or we meet, need specific advice. So as you can see, those three on the outside are what my, my RCT experts are trained in. They're experts in rapid change. And then in the middle, you can see community. Community is the key. Having a high performance community. And this is why we created the Accountability Accelerator um, um, Expert Sessions every single week. And we put our top performing clients together with our tribe um, so that you're around a high performance team. You can see the different belief systems. You can buddy up all of those things. This is why this program, Freedom Accelerator, is so important for this new world at the moment. So that's RCT. The next one. All problems are problems with the imagination or solutions are solutions with the imagination. This is why root cause is really powerful. So if we go back to the root cause of a problem and then we change that idea, okay, using the imagination, we're going to access solutions. The problem is our thinking. Thinking outside of our rituals and patterns is one of the hardest things to do. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, thinking outside of your normal rituals of thinking is one of the most challenging things you can do. So thinking outside of your problems, if you, you're used to thinking of problems, a lot of people have patterns of, I don't know, where they just go, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> what if you did know? What if you actually did? And this is where, where when I challenge someone with an I don't know pattern, they go into this blank spot. And if they let themselves go through that blank spot, they'll access a different thinking pattern. But typically people don't, they'll distract themselves because maybe there's some emotion or there's a war that's underneath that. Or maybe it's easier to say, I don't know, because if you did know, you'd have to do something different and face something. So the easiest thing is to tap out. Um, the key is to become active with your imagination instead of passive. This is what we help you do. And if you start to change the story, if you look at your internal self-image, the story that you're telling yourself of yourself, um, we can start to change your life. This is the key. So you can see what I do is freedom starts off as an inside job. We want to, we want to, you know, start there. We want to do an audit of what's going on there. Um, then we start to look at strategy and giving you the best tactics around health, wealth, relationships, but looking at it from a place of how do you love it? How do we get your psychology to a point where we heal the war inside that you actually love doing all of this stuff? That is the key to lasting change and long-term follow-through. Okay, this is the concept of live it now. I know I'm going over time, apologies. Um, this, we have a timeline. We can be stuck in the past or we can be stuck in the future. Um, the key is getting to the now position. So we find 
that if we can find these limiting ideas along the past timeline, and if we can start to change those ideas, it will then have an impact on your future. See, stuck in the future is thinking of the worst case scenario or daydreaming about this is what I want, but doing nothing about it. The key is to get yourself back here. Live it now. Now, instead of for 10 years sitting on top of a mountaintop and meditating, no, we've got technology now that can, that can work for them so much faster. We just want to find the limiting ideas using RCT. We want to change those ideas and we want to look at where what are these wars that are happening unconsciously along the timeline. We want to, we want to heal those wars so that we spend more time in present time. Even if you think of my company, your future now, so we want to create your future. So an idea of possibility, not, not impossibility, but then we want to come back and we want to live it now. So your future is actually now. And the key is to live it now. So we come up with an idea, we let it go and we come back here and then we create. And the more time we spend in present time, the more energy we have, the more clarity we have, the more knowledge that starts to come through. What we want to be able to do is download that knowledge that comes through, that true voice, then what we want to do is we want to execute it as fast as possible. We want to create, and then we want to be able to share it. We want to make a difference because when we share our knowledge, when we share all of this, we create space for more information to come through. I hope that's making sense. I'm going through a lot today, a lot of concepts, but let's get into something. So I want you to grab your books right now, everybody. Grab your books. And I want you to look at the three areas of life, wealth, health, relationships. Now you notice in, in the middle, what connects all of them is mindset. So this is why um, in the Freedom Accelerator, the three modules that I have, I call it mindset, mindset and health accelerator or mindset and wealth accelerator, mindset and relationship accelerator. So we look at the mindset first, then we look at tactics, okay? Now, what's interesting is, is, is that we choose the one that you're avoiding because that indicates the biggest war, everybody. Whereas a lot of coaches, they go, oh, tell me which area of life you would like to get a breakthrough in. No, tell me which area you would avoid at all costs. <laughs> and it's one area, only one area, not, not two, just one area that you would avoid at all costs that you only look at it in a crisis. Um, maybe there is some fear or something associated to that area. You don't want to look at it. It's the area that it's probably popping up right now. It's the area you're like, no, I don't want to look at that. No, I don't, I don't want to look at that. Well, that is the one that is causing the biggest emotional leakage. So, so I'm going to give you some time right now to just think about that area. I'm going to give you one minute to think about that area. And then I want you to write it on your page and circle it. Your time starts now. Often I see people leave at this point <laughs> because it triggers them. Don't do that. Because if you leave and you miss this next pit, that's where you stay in life. You know, it's time to lead everybody. It's time to, to shift from being the wounded leader. It's time to rise to a new level of authentic leadership. And how we do this is we heal the war inside. So you've got one minute. Choose that one area of life. Once you've got that one area of life, I want you to write it in the chat. Go now. Alrighty, welcome back guys. So let me just check the chat here. 
So I want to see everyone write down in the chat the area of life that they're going for. So we've got you, Shania, you're going for wealth. Well, sorry. Um, Alison, relationships, fantastic. Um, Rihanna, we've got relationships as well. Catherine, we've got wealth. Um, Catherine G, we've got relationships. And iPhone is relationships. <laughs> awesome. I think we've got everyone, right? Yep. Our TAF, we're waiting for you. So our TAF, just choosing which area of um, life you're going for. Remember, uh, relationships. Relationships. Fantastic. Remember, it's the area of life you would avoid at all costs. That is the key. That's right. Awesome. 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 Okay. So how are you feeling, guys? How are you feeling about that area of life? Notice if anything's coming up for you. And you may even write it down. When you think of that area of life, how do you feel? When you think of wealth, how do you feel? When you think of relationships, how do you feel? Rihanna says anxiety. Um, and your so relationships. Yep. And um, and yeah, write it down. We want to get this stuff out. And anxiety is, you know, like, remember, anxiety is thinking about the worst case scenario in the future. So well done. Well done for writing this down. Um, okay, let's jump into the next part. Now, this activity, Problems to Power Questions, is in my book, Lacking Confidence. Um, Cloud, if you want to, um, if you wouldn't mind, or Jess, if you wouldn't mind just writing, um, putting the link to our group, Breakout to Success with Matt Catling, we're going to give away a copy, um, some copies of this book, Lacking Confidence, um, um, probably about 12 o'clock today. So be on the group and um, we'll put a post up. And um, so for those of you that are there, um, you can grab a copy of this book. It's really, really powerful. And it's, remember, it's to help turn those limiting ideas into, uh, or limiting patterns into patterns of power. Um, confidence, it's an inside job, just like freedom, it's an inside job. So we'll put the link up on the chat for you in just a second. And now inside of this book is an activity called Problems to Power Questions. And these Problems to Power Questions are so amazing. Um, just these questions within themselves can, can shift these limiting ideas and patterns. <laughs> but what I'd love to do as a demonstration, would, would someone like to, to do a demo? Was that you, Shania? Did you yeah. jump in? <laughs> Uh -huh. So I know you guys can't see me today um, because uh, because of my, um, my my interesting face right now. Um, but uh, and for those of you that have just jumped on, I've got this my 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 eyes filled up with blood. Um, I've um, you know got something going on here. I look like I've been ten rounds with Mike Tyson at the moment. So that's why you can't see me. Um, but uh, I want to see you, so Shania, if you want to turn on your camera so I can see you specifically. And, um, and and give Shania a big round of applause, everybody. Massive commitment happening here. Awesome, awesome. She was, she, Shania was at Live It Now on the weekend as well. We're looking at doing some incredible stuff with us as well. So really, really excited. And so happy that you put up your hand as well. So if we look, the area of life you have chosen, Shania, is wealth. Is that correct? Yeah. So the first thing, um, we'll start off with this. When you think of wealth, just shut your eyes. Take a deep breath in and out. And what's your first emotion that comes up when you think of wealth? Nervousness. So nervousness. Okay. And where do you find, where do you feel that nervousness? What part of your body? My stomach. In your stomach. So I would say like nervousness, but your stomach's like your power center. So feeling powerless. Would that be fair to say? Do you feel yeah. powerless around money and wealth in your life? Yeah. Yeah. Notice tone of voice there as well. Take a deep breath in and out. So we'll jump into the, by the way, everybody, this information is the most important information when it comes to wealth, not balance sheets, not budgets, not any of that stuff, because this will determine what you do or what you don't do. And no one looks at this stuff. The financial planners of the future, this is what they'll be looking at, is this stuff. This is what authentic leaders do. We do the emotional work first, then we bolt on the budgets and the strategies and all of that type of stuff. See how it works? This is a key to follow through, everybody. So um, let's do problem to power questions, okay? So if you've got a blank sheet, or you can just answer if you want, um, and um, we'll give you the recording of this. But when it comes to wealth, and I just want the first intuitive response that it comes up. Um, tell me, what's the problem when it comes to wealth? What's the story? What's the problem? First thing that comes up. 
feel like I don't know how. So I don't know how it comes up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how's that a problem? Because to me, it feels like it creates a blockage. And then when you were saying about going on war with yourself, that's what was my pattern was find like creating the war on, I need to know how not creating space to find how. I'm just going to go back a step of what you just said. Interesting. You said it creates a pattern. You didn't say you create a pattern. You said, you said it creates a pattern. Now in RCT, we call this disassociation. So you're putting it outside of yourself it over here which indicates avoidance would that be fair to say yeah bingo so we need to get you connected to that area not disconnected from that area let the emotion come up my dear this is great take a deep breath in and now so you disconnected from this area of life and the excuse was i don't know how the excuse was like oh i don't have the mental capacity is that right yeah yeah as in, I don't know, like knowledge. But the yeah. truth of the matter is, when we started to dig down, no, you've disassociated. How long have you disassociated from wealth? Uh, yeah, pretty much my whole life. Yeah, not your whole life. What's your earliest memory? Just let it come up. That you disconnected around wealth. When I lost a job and I wasn't able to, when I left my ex-partner actually, and having to do it all on my own. Bingo. And it was just, yeah, a lot of burden. Bingo. Now, now notice this, what we've got here, lots of relationship. And I want you to write this down, Shania, this is gold. So what we've got here, loss of relationship, and I have to do it alone. I want you to think about that. Loss of relationship, I have to do it alone. So guess what? It was a disconnection. So what we've got is a pattern around relationships and I have to do it alone. Think of that pattern in your life. Feeling disconnected and having to do it alone. Shania, you still there? I think we just lost you. Yeah, yeah, sorry. My son just came in the room. That's okay. Isn't it interesting? <laughs> yeah, definitely. And you know, we're, we're talking about this, and then your son comes in the room energetically. Yeah. And, you know, recently I I I, I had I shared this at Living Now as well. I had a friend over, he has a toddler. And his toddler is similar to the age of Elsa, my daughter. And um, we could see that this toddler just followed mum around and just would not leave mum's side. And and for him, like, you know, as a father, his, his daughter just wasn't anywhere near him. And we noticed that um, she would follow mum and she started hitting more and more aggression. And, uh, you know, dinner party at my house. Anyway, all of a sudden we're doing RCT work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting at the table and um and he's there and i did this shift and we found that you know when he was three or four years old um you know he had a he had a, a sibling that um that needed a lot of help was in a health crisis was in a health challenge and so when he wanted help there was the help wasn't there and when he asked for help there was this aggression and so he internalized all this stuff. I helped him go back there to that limiting idea. We shifted it. And then no joke, everyone. I've never seen, like, often I do work with people and I see the results, you know, two weeks later. Um, or they tell me the results. But I got to see it. I got to see energy in action right in front of me. And wow. no joke, within five minutes, like, just almost instant when he got the idea, when he, we shifted the energy, the child stopped screaming straight away walks over, sits on dad's lap. And he's like, this has never happened. Like, this is unbelievable. And then we look at what's happened in his life now. Um, his relationship with his wife is more connected. With his business, with his teams, he's now asking for help. Whereas before he wasn't asking for help, he was doing it solo. So anyway, back to you, Shania. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. 
Are we able to see you or we're not allowed to see you? What's happening? Oh, here? sorry. <laughs> My son just came. I'll put it back on. Hang on. So, son comes in the room right when we're doing this. <laughs> I know. It didn't bother me the whole time prior. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Energy in action. So, what we found was, you know, albeit we're talking about the wealth area, what's really coming up is relationships and, you know, this pattern of having to do it alone feeling disconnected around relationships, having to do it alone. Think of your life. How has that been for you in your life? Pretty, really hard and draining. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. And it happened before, before this partner, right? Has that been what's yeah. happened with you? You've had to do it alone yeah. in life. I've always felt disassociated, say through like growing up with my family, like, also, like my father being in a domestic violence household Bingo. and stuff like that. So, bingo. And your relationship with your father, what did what did he say to you? Pretty much, there was always something wrong. Um, yeah, was always I was the only one out of the siblings that ever got hit. Mm -hmm. So it was always the why me kind of always popped yep. up. And did, then um, did he after say, like, yeah, sorry, I just got back to stem. Did, yeah. did he say anything about your mental capacity? Yeah, um, it was like, you're too much, you're too too loud, you're too this. Like, it was always, I'm too much. Yeah. Hey, baby, hang on. Five minutes. Thank you, Anya. That's the pattern that's coming up here is that, you know, like you said, I don't know. I don't know what to do. And, yeah. that, can, and that can indicate like a knowledge thing. And this is why I'm asking, you know, you've, there's disconnection. There's, there's three things that are happening here. There's the knowledge part. I don't know what to do. There's the disconnection of relationships. And we've saw, we saw this with partner, but we can see it with dad. Sorry, sorry. I was on the phone. Someone was just at the door. <laughs> see, it's as That's we do right. this, I'm getting. <laughs> it's all oh. happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just uh, I want you guys to see this because this is beautiful. What's what's starting to happen right now? This is a reflection. You're getting so busy supporting everyone else, and this is you know potentially a bit of a pattern to avoid dealing with this wound inside. Yeah. And the wound inside is is that would it be fair to say were you ever called dumb or anything like that? Yeah, I was really bullied at school with that. Um, even at home, like all my sister, like my sister and my brothers mm. and stuff, they were always like congratulated, um, accolated. And it was, even if I did something, they would always focus on the bad about me and never yep. the good. And so then I was always having to prove myself. I felt like, yeah. So here we, here we have, we can see the pattern of where it started, right? We've got this, this belief around yourself, around knowledge that has been picked up from dad and then having to do it by yourself, disconnected and having to do it by yourself. And sorry, then, sorry. Oh, you're sorry. right, my dear. This is, <laughs> what you're seeing right now is a reflection of your life. Yeah. You running around, avoiding this one. Because the truth of the matter is, is that... Is you did feel unsupported. And if we look at the idea that's popped into your head, the limiting idea is, is that, that you don't know. And then the double whammy of this is, is that I've got to do it alone. Is everyone seeing this? How powerful is this, everybody? You're getting to see it like right in your face now. This is your life right now that's happening. When we've just got to stop, we've got to stop like that boat. We've got to stop and heal these aspects. Because this is what's controlling your wealth. It's got nothing to do with money. Is everyone saying this? Sorry, it's right if I just finish this. Is that okay? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. No, no, no. Take your time. Not a, not a problem. See, this is what will put money in your pocket. Is that if we shift these limiting ideas around your intellect, 
if we shift these limiting ideas around relationships, around worth, and we shift this kind of belief that you've got to do it alone, if we shift those three, everything is going to change. Definitely. And what I've even noticed in the last week or since that last live it now, it's, I do know how I say I don't know and I'm catching myself in that moment. It's mm. because I'm never open up prior. <laughs> yeah, I'm, prior never did open my awareness to know how or accept myself in because letting it come through. Because, Where, the, yeah, the intellectual side, side was associated to enormous rejection. Definitely. And what I've noticed that's even working for me is just accepting but acknowledging, accepting, like taking that accountability, mm. but then shifting it, that has really helped. But then I've noticed the reoccurring patterns, the feelings still come up. And prior, my old patterning would be war, like what we were talking about before. And what I've noticed is, you know, those feelings never really go away. It's more to do with how I'm responding to it. Yeah. And having exactly what you said, a group of people around that, understand or have that higher knowledge as well they're able to show you different coping mechanisms or way to be able to move forward and that really does open my mindset a lot to what I'm, i suppose what i want to say to you is is that if we get this sorted there will be no coping mechanisms at all <laughs> what's going to happen is is that we when we get this sorted you'll probably end up loving this area of life and and the three things i just want to go over this again and I really want you to hear these ones, is the relationship that you have around your, you know, your knowledge, your intellectual capacity. We've got to shift that idea. We've got to shift the next one, which is, um, you know, this belief, this belief that you need to do it alone. You disassociate and you do it alone. They're the two big things that I, I want to share with you today. I really want everyone to see this, by the way. Everything that's happening right now, I really want everyone to see this because it's perfect. What it reminds me of is um is my mum. My mum, um, you know, single parent, my dad managed all the money. And um, my mum always believed that she didn't have the knowledge. So she just gave her power away. And even though inside she knew that maybe some of the decisions weren't right, she knew intuitively. Um, dad just took control of everything. When my dad passed away, it forced my mum into a leadership position when it came to the wealth area. She did a lot of emotional work on herself. She, within five years, she amassed more money than my dad did in his entire life. Wow. And this is what I'm saying to you, Shania, is when we do the emotion, when we, when we discover these limiting ideas... And we shift them so that they no longer work. And we let these go. We let go of your dad's voice in your head. And we really work on you being able to trust people and bring that, people. Yeah, in. that's a big thing is trust. And that's why I wrote on their vulnerability. Because mm -hmm. like I was even in one of my coaching sessions, for an instance, what I even discovered, it's hard to put the armor on through trauma, but it's even harder to take the armor off. Totally. But, uh, Oh, Taking man. that armor off creates that vulnerability, which is going to create that creative spark, well, which is going to, you know, everything you've, done, everything you've done has led you to this point. This is why this is coming up right now. Why you put your hand up. This is the next key to the puzzle. This is what I'm saying to everybody on this call right now is that if we get these, if we get the inside right, freedom starts off as an inside job. If we get that right, then you will actually apply your knowledge then you will actually apply your strategies and bring resources in. You will bring new, new people in. See, if you're operating from your wounds, you'll bring in wounded people. But if we turn, if we create space from your wounds and we turn up your true voice, then we put you, well, then when we put you in new communities, it can't be the same communities. When we put you in new communities, there is a magnetism that starts to happen a magnetic effect. Energy is magnetic. So we bring in new people, new opportunities. And so this is why when we do this work, sometimes there is conflict because if we shift the wounds, guess what? People are still in your environment have still got those wounds. They probably have that in common with you. They want that wound back. 
But no, we don't get rid of them. We just open up our sphere, open up our communities. Being involved in communities like ours, this is why I set the whole structure up, which is we do the release work, we do a coaching, we hold you to a plan, then we give you the best strategies and put you in part of a high-performing community. And it works, you're seeing this. And this is why, like I had one group that just did the Mindset and Wealth Accelerator that's part of the Freedom Accelerator. Um, and this is a cheaper program. This is one of our cheaper programs. In six weeks, they did 475,000. And this is because we shifted the wound, we got on a true target, then we gave the best strategies and they were working with a team, with a community. This is the ultimate. This is why this is so important in the world right now is to be doing this. And more specifically, everybody, we use the crises that we face. We use the crises, the setbacks to uncover even deeper wounds, even deeper wars. This is why I'm so excited to get RCT out there right now, because we need as many people doing this, using crises to uncover wounds, uncover wars, heal the war inside, turn up that true voice and get out there and create. So Shania, well done. Um, the process that I did with Shania loosened the grip on the pattern, gave her awareness. As I said, if you would like this, I have the exact scripted questions and even a video demonstration of doing this on my group Breakout to Success with Matt Catling. Um, my team, if they, I'm, I'm pretty sure they've already done it. If they haven't, they're going to share the link to that group. Um, and, um, and, I, and my book's there, Lacking Confidence. I'll give that away at 12 o'clock today if you want a copy. But I have some... I have some uh, some things that um, I want you to do between now and our next session. We have a challenge and we're giving prizes away. Every day we're giving prizes. And the grand finale is, as I said, you can choose one of the modules out of Freedom Accelerator, which is either health, wealth, or relationships, mindset, um, sorry, mindset and wealth, health, or relationships accelerator. So you can choose one of those. It's worth thousands of dollars. You can have it for free. This is for the person that steps up the most over the next three days. Tomorrow, I have a prize for you. It's a healing session. Um, and this healing session is so powerful. I did it recently with Ange and she went into surgery and we did this healing session and she healed 50% um, faster. The doctors could not believe it. And so we can, we use this healing session to heal wounds, to heal trauma, all of that type of stuff, as well as the physical. So one person um, is getting that as a prize tomorrow. And this is my challenge. And then we obviously, we've got the grand prize at the end. So my challenge for you is this. Um, it's an identity challenge. I want you to get on the group, break out to success with Mac Atling. We've shared you the link. I want you to do it FB Live, a Facebook Live. And get on video and I want you to share, introduce yourself to this group and I want you to share the area of life that you're working on in this challenge. That's all I want you to do. And I'm going to give a prize for the person that is the most courageous, the most courageous share. And that prize tomorrow is this healing session, the RCT healing session. So powerful. You get that for free and it will go towards... Um, you know, the grand prize as well, which is the, the accelerator program that you get to choose. So that is our session for today, everybody. Um, um, Rihanna says, live to everyone or just video on the page? I want you to go live to everyone on that group. Okay. Um, a lot of people have done this challenge already. It's a beautiful community on there, but I want to get you out of your comfort zone. This is doing the stuff that you would avoid everybody. That's the key to this is to face the things that you would normally avoid. So I think when you go to comment, you can actually click um, a live. And I want you to do a, a video, a live introducing yourself. My name is, and this is the area of life that I'm working on in the challenge, the area that I've been avoiding. And we'll be looking at this. The most courageous share wins tomorrow. We'll be announcing it tomorrow. So that is our session for today, everybody. We've got the link for you in the chat for the group. Please join now. And um, congratulations. And remember, the area of life that you're working on is what we chose in the previous session, it, um, section, sorry, whether it be wealth, health, or relationships. It's the one area that you're avoiding. So that's the area that you're working on. And as I said, at 12 o'clock today, we're going to be sharing, uh, giving you the opportunities to grab a copy of my new book, Lacking Confidence. I hope you enjoyed today. I will see you tomorrow, everybody. Take care.